We've reached the knockout stages of Europe. I know, very exciting indeed. What's less exciting is it's Besiktas again. They've already beaten them twice this year. Let's hope we can beat them twice again. Yes, hello, welcome on into 11am Sports, here for the Kelly Boys on Football Manager 21. If you're new around here, do hit that subscribe button for more daily Football Manager 21 content. And if you missed the last episode, go and have a look at it. We did not bad against Ayr. No comment about how we did against Aberdeen. But yeah, last time we played Ayr in the Scottish Cup, we won that game. Aberdeen we lost to in the league, unfortunately, and we played one game in between that episode and this one, and that was up against Celtic. You can see the stats in front of you there. That was a fairly even game. You know, the, the possession was, was in our favour. We had 52%. Shots, 10 to 17. That was fairly close. And uh, that was a one-all draw. You can see from the left-hand side that we scored in the first minute of the game. Calafiore had come down the left-hand side, swung in across, and it hit off Ramos Mingo, who... Turned the ball into his own net. We went a 1-0 very early on in the game. Bello, their left back, then scored a stunning strike uh, at 22 minutes on the clock. Mamini scored a goal from an offside position, which was disallowed. And then Moyes Keane had a penalty, and that was saved by Ryan Morris. And that basically was all that happened in the second half. It was fairly boring. A 1-0 draw against top of the league. Celtic, you can see Ryan Morris with an 8 rating. Centre-backs, both the only people above 7 ratings alongside Hamill. We did well defensively, I'll say that. Though I was surprised with the number of attacking opportunities that we did have in the game. But one all draw against top of the table Celtic. I was happy with that result. And the way we played in that game did make me do a little change to our tactic. And we're going to stick with that from now on to see exactly what happens. We played instead of a deep line forward with a poacher. We played a pressing forward. And uh, in that game, it was Harper who played there because of his pace. I chose to have him up front. But he's obviously not registered for the Euro Cup 2 here. Uh, but a pressing forward alongside a deep line forward. And it worked quite well. So I'm going to play that again. And Miranda plays better as a pressing forward than Alan Graham does. So we'll play Miranda there. I'll play Graham as a deep line forward in this game against Besiktas. Hopefully, hopefully it does quite well. The, the team is, is one you'll probably recognise for most of it. Uh, and goal Morris, Renan Augusto and Anderson at the back. Magalan is on the right and we're playing Maza at left back because Calafiore is out for up to six weeks with a back injury. It says two to four here, but it was six weeks initially, it said. So Maza gets the game at left back. Velasquez alongside Hamill in midfield. That seems to be the pairing I've went with recently, unfortunately for Ludovic, who's playing very well, but he's fallen to the bench. Lambert on the right, Booker on the left, and Miranda plays that pressing forward, and Graham is the deep line forward. You can see on the bench, our only striker on the bench is Miramino, because unfortunately I have not registered any of the other players who can play up front for the team, for this competition. Less said about that, the better. But let's get into this. We've already beaten Besiktas twice this year. 3-1 and 3-2. So there should be goals. And hopefully there are lots of goals for us in this game. Oh, and also I didn't have a backup goalkeeper registered for the competition. So uh, I've had to bring Jamie McGowan up from our under-18 teams. He's not very good, but he's literally just a goalkeeper on the bench just in case an injury happens to Morris. So we'll give McGowan a, a very large number. Let's give him 61. So here we go, about to kick off. They're playing a 4-2-3-1 formation. We're playing our now typical 4-2-4 formation with lots of attacking talent there and hopefully lots of goals. Anderson has got himself a bit of an injury, a bruised ankle, but we're going to ignore it. We'll say that he can play for the rest of the game and we're going to encourage the team here. It's a throw in on the right-hand side. Magalhães throws it in, but Lambert doesn't win it. But Velasquez does collect the ball, and is he going to switch it to the other side of the field? Hamill with it. Finds Maza, who goes down that left-hand side, cuts into the box, now hits it. And it's a fairly easy save for Silmani in that Besiktas goal. And now Darren Anderson is definitely injured. Potential foot injury, adding on from the ankle injury. Did Javi was our best player in the game so far, so that's a disappointing thing to see. Egan Riley is our backup defender on the bench, so he can come on and play in that left side of centre back. CJ Egan Riley has not played for us for quite a long time, so hopefully he's fairly fit. Maybe. And I tell you, we're reaching half time here, and it's been a very boring first half after I said that we scored lots of goals against them in the previous two games. We have not done that here. Take it 
But uh, I mean, I'll take a nil nil away from home so long as we win at home. But I would quite like some goals here. And another highlight on the right hand side, it's thrown in. And Velasquez collects it and finds Rena and Augusto, and he'll find Egan Riley, and it'll come out wide left here. Surely Buckert here. Mazza's on the overlap, but it's cut in field. It goes to Labber, the back post, and that's just saved by the goalkeeper. And it's away out for a corner kick. Lambert is going to take this. He'll swing the ball into the box and it's cleared away by Besiktas. Both the strikers are doing fairly poorly in this game. So we'll take off Miranda and we'll bring on Minamino to play up front alongside Graham for the last 20 minutes. We've kind of dominated the game in terms of possession and shots but not really done with it. I'm going to demand more from the entire team. They did not like that at all. Ortiz can come on for Lambert. I'll agree with Tim Cahill here. And time is ticking down and there's not a lot happened in this game. Maybe we can do something here in the last couple of minutes. But Bashik does have the ball. It's played forward toward Guven. And Guven comes forward with the ball when he scored a goal. And we're down one now. And totally against the run of play. And we've totally dominated possession. We've had more shots. Yet somehow now Besiktas are winning this game. Wow. I was not expecting that. That was poor. I am shocked. After how well we did against them in the group stages, we were bad there. I can't even say we were bad though because we we did fairly well in terms of performance, but we lost 1-0. That's not good at all. I'll, I'll keep you updated with the game against Hearts in a couple of days' time and then we've got the second leg of this and we need to win it. And, I mean, we need to win it by quite a few because if Besita scored an away goal, we need to score three. But very interestingly, the quarter-final and semi-final draws for the Euro Cup 2 are made today. So we will have a view and see exactly what happens here. So it's still Besiktas or Komarnik for us here. So should we beat Besiktas, we would get to play against Dnipro or Dundalk, which I assume means that we now go to the semi-final here and between those four teams, so Dnipro, Dundalk, Besiktas or ourselves, we'd play against Borussia Mönchengladbach, Nefci, Fenerbahce or Parma. And the other four teams now can play against the other four teams. Very interesting they make the draw so early on. So you know for a long, long, long way down the line who you're going to be playing against. But we need to beat Besiktas and we get a game against Dundalk or Dnipro. And looking at the second knockout round, Dnipro and Dundalk was a nil-nil draw. So it could be either of them. Well, this game has been very boring as well against Hearts. But here's a goal for us. A Miranda header from a Florent da Silva. A uh, free kick swung into the box here. And we're up 1-0 at just about an hour played. And Magalanes has given away a penalty here. It looks like Scarlett is stepping up for Hearts and he scores the goal. And that's them back to one all. Keep you updated with anything else that happens. And Miranda has just put us 2-1 up again. Egan Riley played the ball into Minamino here. He plays it to Miranda and there's a few kind of passes. 1-2 as Miranda thrashes it into the bottom corner. We're two and up with 10 minutes to go. And that is full time. We've won the game 2 1. Two goals from Miranda. An 8.6 rating for him. Manuino came on and did very well on that left hand side for us. And some nice solid work from the defence. Apart from Magalanes, who gave away the penalty and got himself yellow carded. But a nice 2 1 win. I'll say to the boys that was a good win. And you can see from the league table that we are now just four points off of third place. Everyone playing the same number of games. We're within striking distance of third. If we get third, that's a successful season after the way we started and the way it's been so far this season. And the, the, the board really only want third. So if we can get third, which is looking like we might be able to push for, just four points behind. And remember, we will play against St Mirren and Hearts as well after the split. So we can make points on them and they can drop below us. I think it could be quite good. But let's get on with the second leg against Besiktas where we need to win. And if Besiktas score, we need to score three goals. It could be tricky, but let's see what we can do. Right, so here we are for the second leg up against Besiktas. Remember, we're down 1-0 after the leg in Turkey. So we've made a little change. I felt as if maybe we weren't dominating the midfield enough. They had two centre mids and three central attacking midfield players. And I think our two centre mids just weren't enough. So I've went back to the formation we had, 4-2-3-1, and brought in... Uh, an attacking mid to try and sit in there to try and give us some more players in the middle of the park. And this is the team that we're going to go with. Morris is in goal, Renan Augusto and Anderson at centre-back. Magalhães on the right and Maza on the left because Calafiore is still out injured. 
In midfield, we're going to go with Velasquez and Ludovic with Da Silva just in front. Ortiz gets the game on the right because Edward Lambert is struggling for fitness. Uh, Booker on the left and Miranda up front. We get some players like Alan Graham, Ryan Hamill, and Amino and Lambert on the bench to come on if we need to bring them on. But hopefully we can get a couple of early goals in this game. And if Bishita do get one back, then we know that we still need to get a third to get through. Or Bishita will go through and away goals. So either a nice clean sheet and a 2-0 win, or a 3-1 win. So here we go, the players step out. Bashita is wearing all red and us wearing our famous blue and white stripes. And we'll see what we can do here in this second leg. Well, that first half was very boring. Not one highlight at all, and it's still 0-0. No, no. The only perk about that is we only need one goal to take it to added time, or extra time, I should say. We have dominated this game. 11 shots to 2, 64% position, but we just cannot find that goal. We've made a couple of changes. We've brought off Miranda and... We've brought off Bookert and we've brought on Lambert and Minamino for them here. And there's another, oh, this is the first highlight of the whole game. But Sheik does with it, they swing the ball over and Morris holds on to it. And that can't be the end of the highlight. Surely we can recycle this and turn it into one for us. Morris plays the ball forward into Minamino and De Silva and Lambert's got it on the right-hand side now. And he goes past his man. And can he get the shot away? Then they swing the ball in. It's all soft the outside of the post. And there's 20 minutes to go. We'll bring on Hamill for Ludovic, and this is the last throw of the dice. We're going to go attacking. We're going to demand more. There's 10 minutes to go. Mazza throws the ball in to De Silva, but Hamill gets it here. He's plays the ball over to Lambert, and oh my goodness, what a save from the goalkeeper with 10 minutes to go here. We're demanding some more. De Silva swings in the corner, and it's headed away. Oh, that was nearly it. We are 10 minutes away from going out of Europe here. If we cannot find a goal, Lambert with it. Out to Magalanes on the right-hand side. Recycle from that corner. Magalanes hits it off the defender, but Velasquez gets it. Can he swing it? And he does to the back post, but it's cleared away. And there's only 10 minutes to go, as I said. We're in the attacking mentality now. And Ortiz on the left-hand side with the ball. Goes down the line, plays it back to Mazza. Can he swing the ball? And it goes across toward Lambert. But it goes all the way across the field to the corner here. Lambert, back to Velasquez. Velasquez to Magalanes. Magalanes into Hamo. Hamo, Manamino, and Manamino scores the goal. His first goal since joining Kilmarnock. And he does a lovely cartwheel over to the corner flag there. It's one all now. And it's going to extra time if it stays like this. Velasquez back to Magalanes. Magalanes over to Hamo. Hamo hits it, bounces off the defender. And Minamino finishes in the open goal. And away he goes for his cartwheel celebration. And we are up 1-0 here. one all on the night. It's a tight offside, it says, but it's nowhere near being a tight offside. We're perfectly fine. And there's three minutes to go. If Pashita score, they do go through. If we score, we go through. If no one scores, it goes to extra time. And it's going to extra time. The rules still stay the same. If Pashita score, we need to get two because then they'd go through and away goals. Oh, this is exciting. I'm going to say I'm happy. Keep it up. And we're going to watch every single minute of this added time. I'm not sure if we get an extra sub in extra time or not. Uh, I think we do. We certainly do indeed. And there's some dead players out there. Magalanes can come off and Egan Riley can come on for him. Certainly. Let's do that. We've reached half time of extra time. We're going to start here. We could be reaching a penalty shootout. But no, there is a highlight. Can we score? Egan Riley throws it into De Silva and he gets it back and it's into Lambert. And Lambert hits it and it's just gone over the cross. Well, there's 10 minutes left of added time here. And it's a highlight starting from a goal kick for Besiktas. The ball played forward toward Bundu. And Bundu has it back to Voka. And Voka... The ball out to Omrani here, but Velasquez has got it after Lambert won it back. And Egan Riley's gone down the right-hand side. And he gets challenged by Omrani, he keeps the ball. Egan Riley plays it to Lambert. Lambert back to Egan Riley, and Velasquez into the box. And Ortiz hits it, and Hamill hits it, and it's just about going in. That's class and assist for Pepe Ortiz. I'm not quite sure if it is, but we've scored a goal. We've gone up 2-0 in the night, 2-1 in accurate, with a goal from Hamill there. Lambert gets the ball, plays it to Egan Riley. Velasquez swings it over, Ortiz kicks it off the defender, and Hamill hits it. And Salmani saves it, but it just trickles into the bottom corner. And there's 10 minutes left in this extra time. And we're up 2-0, 2-1 in aggregate. If Besiktas score, then they will go through still. We've had 34 shots to their five. We're not going away from attack because we're doing so well on it. And we've reached the end of the game. And we are through after a dramatic extra time period. A goal from Minamino to take us to extra time. And a goal from Hamill in extra time to win it for us there to now look at those statistics, 63% of the ball, 34 shots to 5, 15 on target to 2. 
we dominated that game and thank goodness we got through because we dominated both legs to be fair. We just didn't get the win in the first one and I'm glad we're through. And good minutes to Besiktas. Four times we played them now. We've beat them three times. But the important thing is we're now through to the next round. Let's see who we play. Do we play Dnipro or do we play Dundalk? And looking at the scores here, we play against Dundalk. They scored a goal in the 88th minute to get through. In fact, they were down 2-0 after 14 minutes. They scored one on half time and then two late goals won that game. So we play against Dundalk in the next round. It's probably, I prefer to play Dundalk than Dnipro, I think. Unless Dundalk have done something I'm not too sure about and see if they've improved or not. But that seems like the easier game. So that Dundalk double header comes either side of our Scottish Cup semi final. So that could be some very interesting episodes down there. I think I'll break away from my norm of showing you both legs because we've got the Scottish Cup semi final in the middle. So the first episode will have the first quarter final leg against Dundalk and the Scottish Cup semi final. And the second episode can have the game against Dundalk, the second leg, and the first game of our post split fixtures. That could be very, very exciting indeed. It was a very dramatic video as well in the end after that lovely 2-0 win against Bashik does in that second leg. So if you have enjoyed it, another reason to leave a like. Come on, this was a good video and there's more to look forward to. So please do support the channel by hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'm looking forward to some more. And until the next one, we'll see you then.